And good evening. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. My name is Paul Grogan and I'm going to be tonight doing a short interview and then we're going to be doing a playthrough of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Demo Scenario Number 2. Uh, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a game that first came out in 1981, uh, published by Sleuth Publications way, way, way back in the day. Uh, I've been playing it for the last 38 years with every gaming group that I've ever been a part of. I absolutely love the game. I've been a massive Sherlock Holmes fan my whole life. Um, and yeah, a few years ago, Space Cowboys picked up the license to basically, you know, reprint it. And they've been, re they've been supporting it. So uh, they've done a series of boxes, each of which contains 10 cases. Box four is out either right now or soon, depending on where you are in the world. If you're in the UK, it is available right now. You can buy it from your friendly local game store or your online game store. Um, and yeah, that's that's what tonight is going to be. Now, I'm joined by some people this evening. First of all, in the bottom right, Mr. Rick Howard, who's dressed specially for the occasion. Hello. How are you doing, Rick? I'm very well. Hope you're good. Now, you've played a few of these games before as well, because I, I dragged you into this. You did? Yeah. did it's totally those type of games that we like isn't it solving yeah. mysteries um working things out basically being sherlock holmes which is always a good laugh yes so yeah thank you for joining me and me and rick are going to be playing through it later on but in the middle we have somebody who i've conversed with for about four or five years online and never actually met or spoken to in person mr dave neal thank you for joining me good to be here so just give people a quick short synopsis of who you are and what you do um, well, I am a game designer who basically mainly does narrative and mystery solving games and I became a game designer basically because of Consulting Detective and I've now done Consulting Detective set and Unlock um, scenario and uh, now have uh, six more games under contract to be released probably next year. Okay, which are not Sherlock Holmes themed? Some of them are. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be a... Yeah, something that I've uh, fallen into doing is, is yeah. Sherlock Holmes related stuff. Yeah. And is this because you're a fan of Sherlock Holmes? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been a big fan um, since I was about eight, I think. I, mm -hmm. I think I read some of the stories around then. And uh, one thing I remember is as a child, I used to, um, I wrote some Sherlock Holmes plays and put them on for my class in my school. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I was kind of creating show Holmes stories. I don't think they're very good, but I was creating Holmes stories since I was, like, pretty pretty young. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, that has Holmes has always been interesting to me. So that's partly why the other games are, are Holmes-themed, and um, there are some other reasons too. But I, I, guess, I guess when you're doing mystery kind of stuff, often Sherlock Holmes is the natural thing you go to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember as a kid watching the old black and white Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes, which is what got me into it. Of course, when you then start becoming a Sherlock Holmes fan and you start reading the books, you realise what the Basil Rathbone films were actually like and, you know, the criticism that they, they got from, you know, people who are really into it. But without them, I, I wouldn't have got into it. So, mm. most important question of the evening, who is your favourite TV or film adaptation of Sherlock Holmes? Oh, well, there are so many, so many it could be, aren't there? Um... There is now, yeah. You know, 20 years ago, there was only a few to choose yeah. from. Such a long process to think. No, it's not actually a long process. Um, I agree with um, what you said uh, as a suggestion. <laughs> Off <It's> Jerry... <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Jerry Brett's always been my favourite. I think he's the closest to, like, the gen, like, as he is in the books that's been okay. on the screen. Okay, because that was actually going to be my second follow-up question, uh, is, is to put aside your favourite... Who do you think is the closest to Sherlock Holmes? And and Jeremy Brett yeah. is the same for both. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the same for me as well. Um, and he is my favourite because because of that. So uh, yeah. And for those uh, for those young people watching, um, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes had a TV series in the eighties uh, on Granada TV where yeah Jeremy Brett played uh, played Sherlock Holmes. Right, so, let, um, yeah, as I mentioned at the start, Space Cowboys published a series of boxes. Box 4 is the latest one, which is themed around the Baker Street Irregulars. 
uh, which is not Sherlock Holmes himself, but Sherlock Holmes has the help of the Baker Street Irregulars, which is a group of young kids uh, run by Wiggins, and they do some of his dirty work, and he always sends them out on errands, solving or helping him solve the cases. So they are um, they are part of the canon literature and, and everything else. Uh, and yeah, box four is about the Baker Street Irregulars. And Dave, you've written all of the scenarios from this box. Yeah. Okay. And how did how did it how did you get to do that then? Um, well, I found the old original game before it got republished by um, Istari, first of mm -hmm. all, back in 2012 or 2013, um, and played through it all and really loved it and thought it was amazing. And I can't remember exactly when, but after kind of running out of cases, I had some ideas that I thought would make like, oh, well, that's kind of a good idea for a case. Um, and so I think I might have sketched one out or something. And then eventually I did start writing it and wrote it and it was around about the same time that I then discovered that Astari were republishing it and so I just happened to have kind of written one at that time so I emailed them with it um, and um, Thomas from Astari got back to me and mm -hmm. said oh yeah we'll play it and try it and I was like okay cool uh, and then it was a long time um, I actually wrote uh, a couple more cases uh, over the next kind of year maybe two years um, and at that point, Istari merged with Space Cowboys and they were making some decisions about what to do with the whole consulting detective line. But eventually it was perhaps it was a it was like years later, maybe maybe yeah. two. I'm not sure exactly. But I suddenly got an email saying, hey, yeah, we want to do a whole box of your cases. Yeah. Uh, so we need 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was, and then that was obviously a very exciting moment. And I yeah. had, I had by that point planned out this idea and had, um, this sort of, this, this case, these cases, which have a kind of, they're not necessarily quite a campaign, but they, in that you, you could, they're all sort of separate cases until you get to the last ones, okay. which sort of then bring in some threads that are kind of hidden underneath everything else and nice. bring some stuff together. Yeah. Um, so I already had that kind of planned out and I basically finished that and and uh, added in some extra cases that focused on the irregulars as the yeah. children helping homes to yeah. make the, give the set this kind of theme. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's great. And you mentioned earlier on, you've done one of the unlocks as well. So this was box, which box was it? Five or? It's five heroic Fox. adventures, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for anybody who's played the unlock series of escape room style puzzle games, uh, yeah, box five contained a Sherlock Holmes themed one, and that was created by by Dave as well. Uh, yeah, which was quite cool. Now, a personal good. thank you for me. Obviously, I do a lot of editing work for Space Cowboys, and some of the editing work I do has to convert, you know, half French, half English back into English. Um, with this one, I had a lot less work to do on this one. So, yes, thank you very much for that. That saved, that saved a lot of time and effort. <laughs> but yeah, we're all good. So tonight's yeah. scenario, you wrote this as well. Is that right? Yep. Okay. This is a demo scenario. You can download this yourself and you can play this yourself. It is available. There is a link in the show notes uh, to this. If you don't want any spoilers, uh, then yeah, switch off now. You can play through it yourself. This is not one of the cases which is included in the box. Okay. So we're not spoiling any of the 10 cases from the box. This is a demo scenario. It's a, it's a warm up one. Um, but we're going to try and do tonight a little bit interactive if we can. Um, me and Rick will be playing through it, but I'll be trying to keep an eye on the chat um, to see if you've got any suggestions with that. But if you want to play along with us, you can. But if you do want to play through the case yourself, uh, then I would suggest not watching anything beyond this point. Right. Is there anything we need to know, Dave? Because I think you said to me earlier on that this one is a lot easier than the normal <laughs> cases. Yeah. OK. Um, it's it's a, it's also it's a prelude, basically, to the story in the set. It sort of forms a... Um, this is when the Irregulars first meet Holmes and then right. the main box set begins with the first full case they worked on for him. So you have this right. story going on. So that's where it falls in the narrative. And yep. yes, it's easier um, and um, it's, it introduces the new system as well, just about s this letters system where you circle letters yep. to track where you've been and, and what you know. And so the game can then do different things depending on what you know. Yeah, I remember you speaking to you about this a year or two ago because one of the the drawbacks or downsides with the original Sherlock Holmes games, it was just pick a location and go to it. And it didn't matter where you'd been to before, 
Mm -hmm. That location was always the same piece of text. And unfortunately, in a couple of the cases, the narrative kind of didn't flow properly. Whereas with this new letter system, the you know locations, what's there, or the information you get might change depending on somewhere else that you've been. So it's a it's a lot more you know realistic in terms of in terms of that aspect. Yeah, so. yeah. I remember you turned up at some places in the base game where you would uh, the original game where you would uh, ask a question about somebody, and you were like, well, "Who's that person?" We're asking <laughs> yeah, about. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the very first case we did, case one, the very first location we went to, it actually said, "By prearrangement, we meet some," and I'm like, "What?" We haven't. This is the first place we've been to, and it, it wasn't really a problem. But it was. It was clearly. Yeah. We should have gone somewhere else first. And he said, "Oh, I'll meet you over there." And we went the over there first. So yes. <laughs> um, right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Dave. You're gonna. You're gonna stick around in the chat and watch us as we struggle with this case. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we won't do. So yes. Right. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, thank you very much, Dave. I will see you later on. Uh, let's go, Dave. Disappear off here. And there we go. Right, Rick, are you ready? Yeah, damn straight okay. I am. So just before we start, I just wanted to mention that my internet at home has died three times today and twice in the last half hour. So if you're watching this now, uh, hopefully it's still going out. If at any point the feed just stops, please stick around. I will get everything sorted and I'll be back with you. But I just wanted to say that because as I say, it's died twice in the last half hour. Right then, off we go then. So we have this case. Uh, here we go. It is an irregular meeting, Saturday, 18th of September, 1880. Oh, and also, mm -hmm. I'm doing a contest. There is a link in the show notes, and if somebody wants to put that in the chat, you can win a whole copy of Box 4, Baker Street Irregulars. Uh, just enter the contest. There is a link in the show notes, and hopefully somebody will put it in the chat. Um, and yeah, there are various questions, and you will get the answers to those questions as we play through today. I'm going to be doing the draw on Sunday. So if you're watching this live, enter the contest now. Uh, but if you're watching this between now and Sunday, the 5th of July, you can still enter the contest. So yeah, go to that form and off we go. Right. Saturday 18th, September 1880. Introduction. The streets of London are a harsh place for young children. With no parents to care for us, we've been left to scrape a living in various ways. Begging, chimney sweeping or selling goods on the street. And amongst the hardship, we have formed some strong friendships. We met Wiggins a month ago. A confident and witty seven-year-old, a year older than most of us, we have already begun to see him as our natural leader. Early one Saturday morning, he gathers us together. Last week, he tells us, I became acquainted with a distinguished gentleman, a consulting detective, so he calls himself, who goes by the name of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I helped him in a little matter, and he was flush with praise. Now he's asked me to form a gang of plucky and sharp-witted folk, uh, what will be like uh, an unofficial police force at his disposal. So we'd help solve crimes, asks Tinker, the youngest of us. That's it, replies Wiggins, and, and we begin to chatter excitedly. And, he continues, raising his voice to be heard, in return, we garner a shilling per day and a guinea for a vital clue. But first, there is a test. A test, ex exclaims Simpson, a stocky red-haired boy, like at school. We burst into raucous laughter. No, replies Wiggins, grinning. Not a jot like school. Mr. Holmes needs to know we're up to the work. You've heard of Gilly the Ghost? Is it Gilly or Jilly? What do you think, Rick? Gilly. Gilly, right. Gilly the Ghost. We nod. Gilly the Ghost, real name Gilly Niles, is one of the most notorious thieves of the West End. An expert in disguise, she can change her appearance in seconds, making Might any pursuers think she's vanished into the air. Once disguised as a male doorman, uh, once disguised as a male doorman, she made away with the hotel's guest's entire set of luggage. She also worked as an actress until she was caught stealing from the theatre and spent seven months in Millbank Prison. Some of us know her by sight. She is in her twenties, has brown hair and seems constantly on the alert. Rick's frantically making notes. In her twenties, brown hair. There you go. <laughs> He's got his trusty yeah. notepad. Uh, Gilly's been seen around Trafalgar Square a lot of late. Wiggins continues. Mr. Holmes believes she has some kind of skullduggery in mind. He's given us two tasks. First, we must find out what she's planning. And second, we must try to stop her plan going ahead. So lads, do you want to be detectives? Our response is an enthusiastic roar. Well then, let's show Mr. Holmes what we're made of. So every case you play in this game always has a narrative introduction. And it's really important when you're playing this game to have a notepad and pen, because a lot of this narrative might contain clues. 
which you will need to refer to later on. Not everything, a lot of it is just flavor, but a lot of it is clues. So instructions. Uh, now investigate using the directory, map, informations, and new informants and newspaper, which all show addresses for places in London. A number followed by an area initials, e.g. 85 Southwest. Go to a place by reading the entry under the address on the following two pages, which is called following a lead. And we need to keep a list of all of the leads that we followed because you will lose points the more leads that you go to. You may reread them at any time and you may return to those places after circling new letters, which is this new letter system that Dave mentioned. When you think you have solved the case and not before, turn to the questions on the last page. So let's just zoom in a bit so people can see this a bit clearer. But one of the things that's very cool about this game is it's unlike any other game that I'd ever played in that you never get told congratulations you've now solved the case you have to decide as a group when you're playing this when you think you know what the answers to the questions are and you don't know what the questions are so at the start of the game you've got to kind of work out what you think the questions might be try and get as much information as you can and you can stop playing whenever you want to now my advice although you are going to lose points based on how many places you go to is never to rush these games Forget about the score, play the game, try and solve the case, enjoy it, and then add up the score at the end. But the score doesn't really matter. It's about, it's about playing it. It's about the experience. Essentially, the rules of the game are extremely simple. You pick a location to go to, you read out that bit of text, and you repeat that until you've decided that you've been to enough places, and that's it. Right. Now, we do get some information. We have a map of London. Now, in the full game, there is a big map of London that you will put out on the table or you'll stick on the wall uh, and it is divided into different areas. We see West Central here and Southwest here and each location has these numbers on. So if we wanted to go to Covent Garden, we would go to 28 WC in the book, okay? Um, we also have the London directory. And again, the full game comes with a big London directory, uh, which is a, a complete alphabetical list of everybody in London and all of their locations and all of their places that you can go to. So the ones that are relevant for this case, we have, um, oh gosh, how do you pronounce that? Uh, Aloysius Bottle, 29 WC, the Colonial Institute at 86 Southwest, Covent Garden Market, 28 WC, uh, F. Geel, 85 Southwest, and Lydia Niles at 33 WC. And there are potentially two pubs that we might want to go to. The Rowdy Robert, 91 WC, and the Unicorn, 19 WC. Every case yeah. also comes with a newspaper. Now, this is normally about four pages. And again, it's done thematically, so it is like the Times newspaper which means there's going to be a lot of stuff in there which is not relevant whatsoever to the case. But normally in there, there is something that you might find useful. And um, when you're playing this game with multiple people, you will all be taking different roles and you'll be passing the newspaper around because different people will see different things. Make sure when you do play this game for real, you don't just give the newspaper to one person and say, you're the newspaper reader. Make sure you pass it around and let everybody have a look at it because as I say, different people will spot different things. Right, so let's have a look through it. Now, have you already had a look through the newspaper, Rick? Half of it. I'm reading it at the moment. I've got to okay. print it out as well, you see. Yeah, so I think people on screen can see that. In fact, it's probably easy. It's actually easier for me to read the screen rather yeah, than that. Yeah, it is for me as well. So, um, rooms for rent from August 16th at a low price. Okay. And you don't need to read everything in great detail. And remember it, you just need to browse it, have a look, see if there's anything there uh, which might crop up later on. So specialist clear. Again, if anybody's in the chat who can see anything in the newspaper that you think is relevant, mm. please let us know. So um, that top right hand story, that a diamond sale sounds diamond sale. interesting. Okay, so we've got a famous Italian jeweler arrived at the Grand Hotel yesterday in London to finalise the sale of Saldanha's Sal, Sal diamond to anonymous buyer. She steals stuff from hotels, we know that already. Okay, so that's a potential place that we should go to. And we have Raphael's um, Madonna on display in the Upper West Wing of the National Gallery from September 1st to December 10th. Now, that's now because it is, it is 18th of September now. Yep. Okay. Now, the other thing as well, down in the bottom right, you see here you have informants. And the informants, from my experience of playing this game with lots of people, is something that a lot of people overlook. As well as the London directory, you have a list of informants which, you, which are relevant for every case 
and you need to not forget about that list of informants because sometimes some of them are really important and there's about a dozen of them that you can go to and the two that it's suggesting might be relevant for this case are the National Archives which is the records for births, deaths, marriages, land and wills records and obviously Scotland Yard where we can go to Inspector Lestrade um, if he's indeed Inspector Lestrade at this point and I'm not sure. Right, nobody in the chat is helping us <laughs> with well, anything in the newspaper that should be relevant. What's this? Activity at Trafalgar. Uh, Second African War, we're moving to Ireland. September 4th, three days after the war ended, the wooden arches were fixed. Yeah, it's possibly not relevant. Paul Alwood is saying decorative arches in Trafalgar Square could be used to secretly access National Gallery tonight as they come down tomorrow. Ah, okay. She's normally seen around Trafalgar Square as well, isn't she? Oh, OK. Right. So on September 4th, three days after the war ended, the wooden arches were fixed. Will be removed tomorrow. OK, right. Yes. Which so be could the be the 19th. OK, so where where are we going to go first? So that we've obviously got Trafalgar Square. Can we go to Trafalgar Square? Is there an actual location for Trafalgar Square? Um... Trafalgar Square is there, but there's no actual number on it, so we can't go to Trafalgar Square. We don't know where the decorated arches are. Or are they the National Gallery? Potentially. The, we've also got on our alphabetical list of London Directory, a Niles Lydia, which is obviously uh, some kind of, might be a relation. Might be a relation. Yep. Dilly, Jilly, Niles. Yeah, and we could go to... The National Archives to find out the, uh, the relationship between them. Stephen is saying in the chat we should go to the theatre which is something that you mentioned as well. Should we go there first? She's been seen around Trafalgar Square a lot of late. What, go to the theatre? Yeah. she been caught stealing from the theatre and then spent seven months in the prison. Uh-huh, in Millbank. <clears throat> There's two theatres. There is, the Covent Garden and the Allegro. We've got a Haymarket Theatre and Allegro Theatre on the miscellaneous section. Where are you looking? On um, In the newspaper. Oh, right, OK. In, oh, yeah, in the miscellaneous section here. Yeah. Haymarket. So Haymarket Theatre. Allegro Theatre, Covent Garden Theatre. Yeah, Haymarket's over at number four on okay. the map. So, yeah, over to the chat. Where do you think we should go? Me and Rick are probably going to go to a theatre first, but whereabouts should we go to? The Allegro Theatre or the Haymarket Theatre? Um, or should we go to the Grand Hotel? The Haymarket is nearer Trafalgar Square. OK. So we're thinking Haymarket Theatre. The chat has gone quiet, which either means I'm not broadcasting or everybody's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just refresh my screen. The Haymarket's also near the National Gallery, people say. I mean, Vicky's watching this downstairs, so I assume if it goes offline, she would come upstairs and tell me about it. Uh, right, so Paul Allwood says Haymarket Theatre. Oh, there we go. Uh, Peter says four. Which is the Haymarket Theatre. Which is the Theater. Haymarket Theatre. Uh, Vicky says not the Allegro as it shows 19th to 15th. Haymarket, right. The chat is saying Haymarket. So we're going to go to the Haymarket Theatre. So what you would do is you would get your book out and you would look up four southwest in that book and you would read that bit of text. Now what I've done, because this is a print and play, I've actually cut out all of the, all of the clue points so that you don't accidentally see something that you shouldn't see. Nice. So I'm just going to route through these. Where is it? Four Southwest. Yeah, four Southwest. Uh, and then what happens is one person will read this out and then you'll make lots of notes. So here we go, four Southwest. Wiggins glances upwards and his jaw drops. Looking up, we see a huge plaster whale suspended above the stage by two ropes. It's for Moby Dick, the theatre manager says, our most ambitious production to date. At the end, two stagehands climb up and lower it down. He points at a rope ladder leading to a narrow balcony which runs around the entire upper story of the theatre. And yes, we know Gilly Niles. She worked here from 74 to December 79 when we caught her stealing and got her sent to Millbank. She's still bitter and angry and has never come back. Not that she'd be welcome anyway. We can't have her thieving from our patrons. And she's a great actress, but we see through any disguise she could muster. Trust me. We've seen all her tricks. Okay, mm -hmm. so this was the theatre where she stole the stuff from. Have we got any extra information from here that we didn't already know? Other than to potentially rule it out because they'd see through her disguises. Right, yes. 
So it's probably not here that she's stealing anything from. Okay, right, so that's one location we've been to. I'm going to leave that up there so people can still see that if they need to. Um, any other suggestions in the chat of where we should go next? And Rick, have you got any thoughts of where we should go? Hmm. As Vicky said, not the other theatre. Not the Allegro as it shows 19th to 15th of September. No, true. Um, so Vicky downstairs says, because we've got two Vickies in the chat, um, both Vicky S's. So my Vicky suggests we should go to the, the family member. The, the Lydia Niles. Lydia Niles. I mean, this is, the, this is the thing. Because every location you go to costs you points, should we go to the National Archives first or should we just take a punt? Because if we go to Lydia Niles and it's not a family member, we've wasted our time. Whereas if we go to the National Archives and find that Telford Vicky, yeah, we can say that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, whichever one we go to might, might be a waste. We don't know. And sometimes you just have to take a bit of a guess. But I reckon we just go to Lydia's house. Okay, we're now going to go to Lydia Niles at 33 WC. Right, okay. Off we go then. Second location. There we go. I'm ashamed to be her sister. Gilly blames the Haymarket for running her, ruining her acting career, but it's her own fault. She can make amazing wigs and makeup and acts so well, but she's never been able to resist taking other people's things. She took new lodging in August, said it's, gr said it's a ground floor room, end of the row, and mentioned something about the smell of horse manure. And we need to circle the letter A. Now, that requires me having a pen. And I don't have a pen. So I could say that we've circled the letter A. I okay, that we have notes. circled the letter A. So the letter A has been circled, which means that will affect possibly somewhere else that we go. Okay, so information that we gain from here. Yeah, the rooms for rent. Rooms for rent in the miscellaneous. Have you seen that? I Top one. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the wigs. <laughs> she makes amazing wigs and makeup. Now, a lot of wigs are made from horsehair. Yeah, check out the rooms for rent. Miscellaneous rooms for rent in the Times. Yeah, at a low price adjoining a stable yard. Right. Okay. So that's where she's staying. Sixty-eight WC. Vicky's saying, "Do I want a pen?" No, we're okay. We're just going to remember that A is circled. Um, okay. So that's where we should go next, I think. Yeah, because that's from August the sixteenth, and she took new lodging in August. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's where we're going to go next. So sixty-eight WC. Strange that that's still in the newspaper in September. It, it is. That is true. OK, let's just move them to one side. We can always go back to them later. Oh, look at this. Right. I'm actually going to cover it up because there's a lot here to read. There you go. Right. There is a row of lodgings at 868 WC. In the yard, pieces of rotten fruit lie next to a barrel marked with a chalk cross as if they'd been thrown at it. Have you circled A? If not, you must leave but can come back later on. OK. Mm. There we go. Yes, we have. Ducking out of sight uh, of a boy scooping up horse manure, we approach the house at the end of the row and stop outside a window. Just then, a woman leaves the house counting money and heads for the market at Covent Garden. That's her, mutters Simpson, and this is her lodging. The window is fastened inside, but it looks weak. We need something to break it open. A crowbar or piece of pipe, asks Tinker. I find stuff like that all the time. I'm a mudlark, you see, and traipse through river mud uh, traps the river mud looking for bits to sell. We might find something north of the railway bridge. He points to the southeast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Circle the letter B. Oh, okay. Uh, have you circled C? No. If not, you must leave, but can come back later on. Okay. So we know that if we circle C, we can come back here later. Right. So I'm going to move that off to one side. Let's just zoom out a little bit. There we go. So what did we get from here? Lots. Lots. So she's gone to Covent Garden. Counting her but, monies. Yeah, but he's also suggested that we go and look for something north of the railway bridge and he points to the southeast. So let's just zoom in on the map a bit. So this letters thing is leading us a little bit, isn't it? Mm hmm. So we were at 68 WC. That's where we were. Um, he's pointing to the southeast. And he's saying we might find something north of the railway bridge. So here's the railway bridge. Charing Cross East, Station. So north yeah. of the railway bridge is 92 WC. 
And this is something that you have to do in the game. You don't just look at places on the list of places you can go to. Sometimes you have to actually look at the map, uh, you know, because somebody might say, oh yeah, he got in a cab and he traveled for five minutes and you've got to try and work out where he'd be. So 92 WC oh. yeah. might be where we find a crowbar or something. A crowbar. Um, but our other option is to go to Covent Garden. Follow her. Where... So what does the chat think? Where does the chat think we should go next? Covent Garden uh, or down by the river or somewhere else? Uh, Mark is saying 91 is southeast as well. 91 is southeast. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, as is 93. I'm just thinking he's saying he's a mudlark. He traipses through the river mud. So I'm thinking it would be something Close alongside the river. the river. And 92 <laughs> is more alongside the river than, than 91 is. Um, although, uh, uh, and if you look at here, 91 WC is actually the Roundy Robert. So I don't know whether they have a crowbar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, for later on, Telford Vicky says, Tinker is a mudlark who finds things to sell. In the paper, there is a diamond sale that might be being finalised. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Eagle eyes, Vicky. If, she, if the mudlark find loads of diamonds in the river, it'd be sorted. Yeah, it'd be sorted, yeah. Okay, so I think... <laughs> Uh, how do multiple visits to the same place count for the score? They don't. So in other words, we could go back, we could go back to this location here uh, and it doesn't cost us anything. Good question. How do multiple visits work for here? I don't think they do. I think if you've been to, and if Dave is in the chat, let us know, Dave. But I think because we've been to 68WC, when we go there again, I don't think that counts as an extra location. Um, but yeah, Dave, if you're in the chat, let us know. So 92 WC seems to be the place where we should go next. You happy with that, Rick? Yep. Let me hunt through my bits of paper and find 92 WC. Gosh, 92 WC, found it. Right, okay. 92 WC says, have you circled B? Yes. We have. Welcome to the river, friends, says Tinker, stepping into the mud. His legs disappear completely. With some uncertainty, we follow, grimacing as the cold sludge slips between our toes. Ten minutes later, Tinker shouts and holds up a strip of metal. Circle the letter C. You can now return to lo locations using the new circle letters. Right, so we found... We found the, 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 par, the bar that can be used as a crow pipe, crow pipe, crow, crow bar. The pipe that can be used as a crowbar. <laughs> Right, okay, so we're going to go back to 68 WC. Here we go. Dave has confirmed revisiting doesn't add. Does not. Thank you very much, Dave. Right, okay, so uh, we'll have one chance, says Wiggins. Do we know what to look for? Do not read the rest of this entry until you want to break in. Okay. Oh. Do, we, do we want to break in? Don't read it. Cover it up. I have. <laughs> uh... I think so. Do we know what we want? No. We're looking for her <laughs> to have nicked something or something. I just like breaking we? into people's houses. Ah, don't tell everybody that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. What do we think? Well, it does say that... Do not read the rest of the story until you want to break in. After breaking in, you may not return to Gilly's lodgings, but we're not going to return here. Mm, a lot of people are well everyone's saying not yet but we've got, we've got a mixture people are saying yes and no okay so break in don't break in uh vote for breaking in not enough information yet not yet mm. okay so we're not going to break in we can always come back here later and it's not going to cost us anything no because what our, our mission is to find yeah. out what she's planning and then stop her okay and you're thinking that if we break in too early... We haven't found out what she's planning. Okay. Okay, we're not going to break in. So we're going to leave that. I'm going to put that to one side for now. So where are we going to go next? Do we want to try... Well, what, what is she going to be doing? She's going to be nicking something. Isn't she? She's a thief. Well, when we went to... Uh, was it here? No, it was here. It was the start of this location. Where we went here... 
a woman leaves the house counting money and heads for the market at Covent Garden. Mm -hmm. so I, I think we go to Covent Garden because I think that's where she is. Uh, Andy Pelton is saying, visit the gallery or the diamond sale. Well, there's two things in the newspaper that are, are nickable, isn't there? The yeah, painting and the diamond. Mm -hmm. The clue we had earlier from someone in the chat said about the Trafalgar Square arches. Yeah, that was from Paul. Being removed, which is quite cool. Yeah. Because that's another clue. But whether everything in the newspaper is relevant. Yeah, it's normally not. But of course, mm. because this is a cut down version, a lot of this is probably relevant. But normally these newspapers are huge and there might only be like, you know, 10% of it that's actually relevant. And you've got to try, and, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Vicky downstairs says she was throwing things at a target. That means something. If that means something. Um, Hmm. Oh, if that means something, yeah. Throwing things at a target. Where was that from? Was that this one? Counting money. Darking out the sides, keeping our holes, moving the push. Where was the throwing things at a target? No, the one really remember where that was. 68 WC at the top, the says, at the top. says Ricky. She was counting money. Uh huh. Yeah. Where was that one? The top. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it says pieces of rotten fruit thrown at a chalk cross at the top of 68 WC. Ah, uh, right, yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm being blind. In the yard is rotten fruit line next to a barrel marked with a chalk cross as if they've right. been thrown at it. Okay, okay so, so maybe she's, she's practising. She's doing target practice for something. Stealing a diamond, throwing it through a window into a bucket. Mm -hmm. Something like that. <laughs> Very possibly. Very possibly. Fruit thrown away, gone to buy more. Do you have your glasses? Yes, I do have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but as we all know, my eyesight is getting worse on a daily basis. So the Grand Hotel, where's the Grand Hotel? The Grand Hotel is... Down there. Well, it's on, well, it's on the corner of Trafalgar Square, isn't it? Uh, the Charing Cross Hotel is 90, the National Gallery is 24, uh, the Metropole Hotel is 27. I don't think we have the Grand Hotel on here. We do, it's next to 22. 22, 22, 22. Do you have your glasses? I have my glasses. Oh, 22 is there, it's at a funny <laughs> angle. <laughs> right, 22, Grand Hotel, yes. I'll, I'll just turn my head that way a bit, there you go. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, people in the uh, in the chat are also correct. The only thing we know for sure is that she's gone to Covent Garden. Okay. So we're going to go to Covent Garden. Okay. Let's go there. So Covent Garden is twenty eight WC. All right. Let's move these out to one side. We've been to those. It's our fifth location. Okay. Holmes did it in one. <laughs> he just went to the pub, thought about it, and then worked it all out in his mind. Right. Twenty eight WC. Have we been to, uh, have we circled B, which we have, right. Mm -hmm. We spot Gilly picking up discarded rotten fruit and putting it in a bag. Then she buys a sailor's knife, the type normally used for gutting fish and cutting rope. As we follow her out of the market, she looks round and seems to realize we're following her. A moment later, she's vanished. Okay, so she's bought a sailor's knife used for gutting fish and cutting rope, okay. Well, there's a rope ladder, wasn't there, in the theatre? In the... The Haymarket. The Haymarket. Where we went. I believe there was, yeah, two stagehands climb up and lower it down, a rope ladder. So do you think she's going to exact revenge by ruining the Moby Dick thing? Make, making the uh, big plaster while drop, because it's suspended above the stage by two ropes. Yeah. Potentially. What, just because she doesn't like them? Well, they ruined her career, didn't yeah. she? Said. Yeah, so so revenge, but not for any financial gain herself, just as a... Potentially. Okay. 
So yeah, two tasks. Find out what she's planning and then stop her plan from going ahead. Again, she might be throwing rotten fruit at uh, the cast members of the play during the uh, play. Okay. In the I hate you kind of way. Yeah. And she wanted target practice unless, rather rather than her throwing fruit just generally at the at the actors. Maybe she's throwing fruit to try and hit some kind of target or mechanism that would then release something. Potentially. Dropping the whale. Maybe a distraction. Yeah, her sister said she blamed the theatre. Yeah, so it's probably getting revenge on the theatre, but whether it is just getting revenge or whether it's for anything else. She disguises herself as a stagehand to cut the rope that holds up Moby Dick. But then that theatre said, ah, trust me, we yeah, know we can see through her disguises. Say, and that's the thing with this game. You will find clues in, in bits of the narrative. So when when they say, uh, oh, yeah, we, we'd recognise her, that's kind of a hint that, yeah, they would recognise her. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Is there anywhere else we can go to get some more information? Well, with this, the, both pubs and there's National Archives and Scotland Yard as well. Mm-hmm. There's the National Gallery. There's a place where the diamond is, which is a grand hotel. I mean, the fact that the Trafalgar Square things are coming off indicates something might be happening around Trafalgar Square when those bridges aren't available. Yes. Which gives you the National Gallery and the Grand Hotel, because both of them are on Trafalgar yeah. Square. Yeah, and Paul's saying, entry to the theatre via the National Gallery. Should we go to the National Gallery? We could go to the National Gallery, okay. yeah. We're going to go to the National Gallery. So, 24WC. Another thing about this game is sometimes you will go to a location and there will be nothing there. And there'll just be a one-liner to say, they're out, okay? Don't get disheartened, okay? <laughs> you know, I know some people who go, oh, this game's rubbish. I went somewhere and there was nothing there. It's just all part of the game and you just got to keep going places. Um, right, 24WC. Let's see if this is one of those places. Twenty-four WC. Right, okay, here we go. We follow the crowds uh to the Ancide Madonna. It is very large, perhaps five by seven feet. Through the formidable locked and barred window, we see an arch going to a window in the Haymarket <laughs> Theatre. A warden tells us only the head warden has access to the window keys. Okay, so, so there's one of these arches from the National Gallery to the Haymarket Theatre. Where was the Haymarket Theatre? There, right. Okay, so there's an arch across there. But tomorrow the archers are getting taken off. Exactly. Well, how's that? How's that help? Uh, well, it means she, whatever she's doing, she's got to do it today. Yeah. Because she won't be able to do it tomorrow because they're no. getting removed. So she's going to use this bridge to cross over into the Haymarket Theatre. But it says a warden tells us only the head warden has access to the window keys. So who is the head warden of the National Gallery? Mm. How are we going to know that? <laughs> National Archives? Mm, unlikely. National Archives is just births, deaths, marriages. Yeah. And, well, it said land and will records. We wouldn't have that. The pubs, um, maybe? Because if you remember here, it says uh, Raphael's Ancide Madonna will be on display in the Upper West Wing of the National Gallery. Maybe it's the other way around. As somebody said in the chat earlier on, distraction. So she drops the thing, the Moby Dick thing, causes a distraction, goes over the bridge into the National Gallery. It's a big, large painting. Okay. Five by seven feet. I doubt she's going to be able to carry that out herself without anyone noticing. True. Uh, Vicky's saying, was there something in the National Gallery to steal or is that in the future? Um, That's that Madonna painting. It is there now. It's there from September 1st to December 10th. Knife. She went to buy a knife. Maybe she would cut the painting out of the frame. Cut the painting out, roll it up, put it inside Moby Dick. <laughs> Maybe not on the last one. Um, but yeah, that she's might gonna, be what the knife's for. She's going to jump into Moby Dick, like Joe and the whale. Yeah. <laughs> and get taken out. No, no we, we're going what on a bit. What about the target practice, though? What's that? That's got to be related. That's got to be something. Hmm. 
Hmm. I mean, the other thing we could do is go to the Grand Hotel where the diamond is, but that's not linked to, to the Haymarket Theatre. No. And the National Gallery. And the I'm link. not sure it is anything to do with the diamond. It might be. She might be trying to do both things. Unless she nicks the diamond, throws it through the window, and it's about throwing the diamond. That's yeah. from target practice. That was the, the idea I had. But who should we be throwing it to? Or where? Mm -hmm. Not much there, is there? No. It's true. She did steal an entire set of luggage. The size doesn't matter. Yeah, Audrey says that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go through what we know. Throwing fruit at a barrel. Bought a yep. knife. Bought more fruit. Uh, she probably wants revenge on the people at the Haymarket Theatre. It's rotten fruit specifically. It's specifically she's, rotten fruit. She's not yeah. buying it. She's picking it up off the floor. She's collecting. Oh, okay, it for right. Some she's been seen around Trafalgar Square. Uh huh. Because she's probably scoping the place out, and planning she's it. Been to prison. Mm hmm. I mean. The other things in our directory is a Locius bottle. Yeah, see, we don't know who that is. No, an F. Geel, we don't know who that is either. No. Covent Garden Market, where we've been. The Colonial Institute, not sure what they do there. And then there's two pubs, Rowdy Robert and the Unicorn. And mm. we've got Scotland Yard and the National Archives. Hmm. Okay, so we've got miscellaneous things. We've had the rooms for rent. Yeah. The stable yard, which got Allegra Theatre Prince Poison, it's a different play, but that hasn't starting until yeah. September the 19th. Haymarket Theatre Grand Premiere on Saturday, which is today. Yeah. Okay, so the Grand Premiere is tonight. It's tonight, so, so she's she's probably going to do the thing tonight to spoil the premiere. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing is specialist cleaners, all fabrics and clothing, serving the colonial institute and, and morality. Uh, and H. Yeah. Admirality, Admiralty, Admiralty. HC. Yeah. Congratulations on your bachelor's degree and condolences regarding your father. All my love, RK. Yeah, that's probably Moriarty. <laughs> Chris is saying go back and break into her flat. Yeah, we haven't done that. I think he's saying throw something at the warden to knock him out and then steal the keys. Yeah, potentially. <clears throat> yeah. So Vicky, Vicky uh, Telford, Vicky is saying they clean at the institute. It's in the paper. Yeah. Specialist cleaners. Yeah, they clean at the institute, but what's the what's the connection to them? I'm not sure if there is. Again. Oh, births, deaths, and marriages will show people's jobs. Does it? Ah. Check if the they're married, the warden. Which is when they're married, they do, don't they? I guess it says Brian, cleaner, forty-three, married Shirley, another cleaner, twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. So we got all sorts of choices. We could go to these cleaners, but I'm not sure not sure the the, the relevance. I'm not sure why we'd go there. Um, you know. A March is saying we could check the nearest pub for the warden, but it's a bit of a stretch. Um They say people's jobs for their births as well, for the fathers' names. So that's a potential one. Okay, so shall we go to the National Archives then? I reckon let's give it a go. Okay, we're going to go to the National Archives, and if it's not good, we know who to blame. Blame. Yeah. <laughs> so, National Archives, 17 WC. So, I've never played one of these games remotely like this, let alone live streaming it. And this is working really well. So, mm. if anybody has a copy of the game, uh, either of the box sets, who hasn't actually been playing this during lockdown, then get on it because you can totally do this. Um, 17 WC. Here we go, 17 WC. Oh, the other thing to mention about the game as well. If you ever want to go to a location and you open the book and it's not there, then you don't lose any points for that. Obviously, you haven't got any information, but yeah, you only lose points for it if... Well, I say lose points. It only counts as a lead if you actually... If there is a piece of paper for it. Mm -hmm. Which there is. 17 WC. Uh... Gillian Edith Niles born February 29th, 1860. Current address unknown. One sister, Lydia Niles born. Oh. Okay, right. So there you go. That didn't get us anything. So uh, that's Paul when you Wood were saying earlier. Saying he's, yeah, he's playing set two remotely. There you go. Brett is saying, ah, she bought a sailor's knife, maybe to disguise. Has she stolen from the cleaners? 
possibly. See, I think the sailor's knife is to cut the painting so she can then steal the painting. I think it's to cut rope because it even says it's to cut rope. True. It did say that, didn't it? Hmm. Oh, okay. So the cleaner's disguise. Go. She's gone to the cleaner's to steal a disguise to disguise herself as a cleaner. Mm. I want to find out who the warden of the National Gallery is. Yeah. And we've been to the National Gallery, but I, I don't know how we're going to find that. Unless it is in a local pub, but again, that's a stretch. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, she could still reach Grand Hotel using the wooden arches. Mm. To steal the diamond. I mean, shall we go to the Grand Hotel just to rule it out? I mean, we're going to quite a few places here. Sherlock's going to be well upset. He is. The other option is that we go back to her house and, and break in, which I quite we, like to do. Which we've we've got a thing, yeah. It's just that it gave you a bit of a warning, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go and break into her house. Okay. Inside, we find a pamphlet for Moby Dick with a drawing of a whale suspended by two ropes and Saturday, 6pm, circled in pencil. Next to it are a wig and moustache. Simpson throws them into the fireplace and holds up a box of matches. I sell matches on the street, he says, as he strikes one and sets the fire blazing. You have time to burn one more thing. Warden's uniform, footman's uniform or cook's uniform, write down your choice. Well, well, well it's go. the warden's uniform, isn't it? The warden's uniform. So, yeah, she's going to cut down the Moby Dick yep. during the um, big play premiere. Yep. Uh, but she's going to do that by dressing up as a warden, getting the key somehow, yeah, um, and then crossing over the bridge into the uh, National Gallery to the Haymarket. Yeah. Quite possibly by using that knife to cut the rope. Not sure about the throne of the fruit. No. But let's burn the warden's uniform. Okay, so we're going to burn the warden's uniform. Yeah. I'll okay. Burn down, but... Now, let's go back to what our objective is, because if you remember what I said at the start, you... You will never be told in this game you've solved it. Well done. You have to decide yourself when you want to stop investigating. And then we go to the back page of the book and we reveal what the questions are. So, how, Rick, how do we feel we're, we've got? First thing well, we is, need... find out what she's planning. Do we think we know what she's planning? Yeah, I reckon so. Okay. And we must try and stop her plan going ahead. Which, which we've, we've done, done, I think. Yeah. Okay. On the plus side, we were right not to break in until now. Yes, absolutely right. So, to the chat, do you think we have enough to solve this case? Are you ready that we go for the questions? Or is there somewhere else that you think we should go? I'll have a drink while we get answers from the chat. Yes, yes. And you think yes, Rick, as well? Yeah, I think yes. Okay, so the chat is saying yes. We are going to go for the questions. Okay, Chris is saying yes as well. So this is really important. In the, if you get the game, do not look at these questions beforehand. Uh, yeah. Um, right, okay. So I'm going to turn this over. Questions. Here we go. I'm going to cover this over. So these are the four questions. Which two buildings does Gilly intend to enter? Okay. Haymarket Market Theatre. Via the National Gallery. Via the National Gallery. So I think that's our two for yeah. that one. Question two. What items did she acquire at the market and why? So rotten fruit and a knife. Rotten fruit is going to be throwing it at the actors and actresses, would be my thought. Just because she doesn't like them? Yeah. Okay. And well, why? What, what other reason? Uh, knife to cut the rope. Knife to cut the rope to cause the distraction? Just to cut, to, to drop the big right. whale on the big paper mache whale, or whatever it was, onto yeah. the people. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is her motive? I think they... it's twofold. It's, it's, it's revenge against the people at the Haymarket. Yeah. But also, she's trying to steal the painting. You still think, still think she's trying to steal the painting? Do you not think? Well, you think as we said previously, cutting out the painting out of the frame is a bit extreme. Okay. So, question for the chat. 
about her motive. Is it literally just revenge against the theatre? Or is it something to do with stealing the painting? Chrissy says revenge. She's one of the most notorious thieves of the West End. She is. Paul saying just revenge as well. Uh, Vicky downstairs says, I think she goes into the theatre, cuts the whale ropes as a distraction and revenge, then goes to the gallery and steals the painting. While everything's kicking off in the theatre. Yeah. I think it's a two birds with one stone situation. Mm. A March says revenge. If she went in any other way, they'd recognise her. She's going in through the window, isn't she? So they, she's, yeah. not, she's not going through the main entrance. Yeah. Um, revenge. Stephen yeah. says revenge as well. well. Let's go to question four. Have you burned her costume? Yes. And which one is the warden's one? Okay, so it's Warden's just question three that we're a bit stuck on. Uh, and you and everybody in the chat says just revenge. Whereas me and Vicky mm -hmm. downstairs think it, <laughs> it was to do with the <laughs> theft. Let's see. So we might have to go with you and the, the majority of the chat, which is just revenge. Okay. Well, if we're wrong, we know who to blame. Yeah. Although Andy Pelton says the throwing of the fruit might be might be to practice throwing to get the painting out. Well, roll it up and throw it like a javelin through the window or something. Uh, yeah. It's a bit odd that she would just have the revenge for that. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. I mean, she circled it in the newspaper and said, like, Saturday this time. And she had wigs and moustaches and that, didn't she? To dress up as somebody. She did not circle in the paper. OK, let's go back to the paper. Right. She is circled in the paper. Haymarket Theatre, 6pm Saturday. She has not circled Raphael in the National Gallery. No. Okay. It's their, their grand premiere. Yeah. Okay. I think I've been convinced. A few people in the chat are still saying that it is to do with stealing the painting, but I think I think we're going to go with just revenge. Okay. I mean, she so, went to prison, didn't she? She did. Because of it. Here we go. Right. So what you do is you write all them down and then... Yeah. We get the answers. So we have to turn this round, just so you don't accidentally read it. And we're going to read the solution. OK, so in a lofty chamber of St. Bart's Hospital, a lone figure is hunched over a bench, working feverishly, feverishly with a set of bubbling test tubes. He turns and in the flickering blue light of the Bunsen lamps, a pair of alert eyes fix on us. Wiggins, he says, I have seen rooms on Baker Street I intend to take. If only I can find a fellow willing to share them. With luck, you will not have to visit this dim laboratory again. But now, Gilly the ghost. I assume you went to her sister Lydia first, whose description of Gilly's lodgings leads to the stable yard rooms listed in the Times. Lydia also said that Gilly worked for the Haymarket, and they say they caught her stealing and got her sent to prison in 79. Aha! Perhaps Gilly wants revenge, but has found it difficult because the Haymarket staff say they recognise her even when disguised. Today, she went to Covent Garden Market to collect old fruit and purchase a sailor's knife. So, disguised as a staff member, she plans to enter the Colonial Institute. The mm. National Gallery would have, been, would have had too much security. Oh. Um, and then cross the arch to the theatre, just as Moby Dick begins. Cutting the rope ladder to the balcony, she will pelt the actors with rotten fruit carried in the bag. Note she had been conducting target practice on a barrel in the stable yard at 68 WC. Finally, she could cut the ropes on the plaster whale, letting it fall and shatter, putting an end to the production. However, with your particular talent, I imagine you may have found a way to destroy her disguise and foil her plan. The detective walks over and crouches. Wiggins, I am impressed enough to appoint you and your associates as my unofficial force, the Irregulars. He turns to address us directly. You must know that working for me will test you to your limits and perhaps beyond. It will not be easy. But I can promise you this, my young friends, you will never want for excitement. There is nothing like the thrill of the chase when the game is afoot. He thrust a copy of the Times into our hands, a death notice circled in red, and then leans forward with an enigmatic smile we will come to know well. So, he whispers, shall we begin? Okay, so Holmes solved this case in four, uh, five leads, Lydia Niles, uh, Gilly, Covent Garden, the Haymarket and the Colonial Institute. He scores 100 points. All right. We score 
OK, so this is different. This is points based on whether we want to whether we went to certain locations or not. Mm -hmm. So did we go to the Colonial Institute? Nope. OK, did we go to the Haymarket? Yes. Oh, sorry. No, this is the answers to the question. Right. No, ignore me. Yeah. Answers to the questions. Which two oh, buildings did Gilly intend to enter? Oh, OK. Colonial we said Institute Haymarket and, and Haymarket. National Gallery. OK, so we got 15 points because we said Haymarket. OK. Yeah. What items did she acquire at the market and why? Rotten fruit to throw at the actors and patrons. Yep. Did we say that? Yes. OK, 20 points. Knife to cut the ropes. Yeah. 20 points. Uh, what is a motive? Revenge. Yeah. Just revenge. <laughs> 30 points. And four, if you burnt the wig and the moustache, you would gain 20 points. Which we, which we did. did. And another 20 if you burnt the footman's uniform. Clue at the cleaners advertised in the Times. OK, so what's our score so far? We are 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 105. OK, now decrease your score by five points for every lead after the fifth. Ah, uh -huh, 10. We had seven five. leads. We went to how many? We were at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 105 minus 10, 95. Oh, we only went to seven leads? Yeah. Is that, all, is that all? Wow, Excellent. okay. So 95. That's not bad. 95. No, 95 is good. Now, normally when you play this game, your score will be anywhere between 0 and 40. Okay, it's really hard, this game. Uh, this was an easier case. It was a shorter case. The normal cases are a lot more complex. will take you about two to three hours to play. Uh, but you've got a very good idea of, of, of how mm. this game Place. There's a lot more red herrings, isn't there? In the full there's, there's more red herrings in the bigger cases as well, but you have to use your deduction. The clues are all there, but you kind of have to work it out yourself. We should have gone to the cleaners. Yes, we definitely should have gone to the cleaners. Dave says we had the right idea, but the wrong side of the theatre. Yeah. What, yeah. Why, why, why should we have gone to the cleaners? I don't 100% get that. Um, what would have led us to the cleaners? Yeah, because we did think about the cleaners and then I kind of dismissed it and said, why well, we would thought, we go well, to the why? cleaners? Yeah. Uh, specialist cleaners, all fabrics and clothing serve in the Colonial Institute and the Admiralty. I mean, the Colonial Institutes, uh, well, the Admiralty is the other side of Trafalgar Square. But yeah, I'm still not quite sure why we would have gone there. But yeah, it's one of those things. Right. Because the National Gallery would have had too much security. Oh, here we go. Maybe. Dave says, if you go to the Colonial Institute on the other side of the theatre, you see people taking uniforms away to be cleaned. So Colonial Institute is 86 WC, sorry, 86 Southwest, which is there. OK, so this is the thing. I got caught out because I was only really looking at named locations on the map. And I mm. shouldn't have done that. We should have noticed, or I should have noticed, 86 Southwest is opposite the Haymarket Theatre and, and should have potentially gone there. Yeah. It's oh, the Colonial right. Institute, yeah, on the alphabetical list. There you go. And as, as Vicky downstairs is saying, the gallery was too secure. And I started thinking about this. When we, did, when we saw, oh, it must be the warden. Let's burn the warden's thing. Even if she'd have disguised herself as the warden, she wouldn't have had the keys. Well, I sort of said that, didn't I? And yeah. said, well, we'll burn the uniform because she'd have got a key somehow. <laughs> Just because yeah. she's dressed up as the warden doesn't mean she has the key. Yeah. And these are all the locations that we didn't go to. OK, there's loads. <laughs> so and this is one thing I like to do after I've played the game is actually just read through all of the other locations and all of the different places you could have been to. Um, and obviously, if you go to everywhere, you should be able to piece it out. But even mm. then, as I say, there is still a puzzle to solve. You do have to put the bits of information together. Oh, apparently like we one of them has Watson. another. Yeah, you can. There's another one where it says you can circle letter A in one of them as well. So there's other ways of circling letter A, which ways, B yeah. and C. So that's yeah, interesting. Here we go, 29 North, uh, WC. It's the pub. So if we'd gone to the pub, they would have told us where uh, where Gilly was. So cool. Anyway, this scenario is available. You can buy it. There is a link. Uh, you can buy it. You, you can download it for free. So there is a link in the show notes of this video with a link to this scenario. So if you wanna if you wanna go on there and have a read of it yourself uh, and read all of the places that we didn't go to, uh, and tell your friends about it, because yeah, fantastic game absolutely free you can go on download it tell them about it get them playing it um yeah that, that was really good i really enjoyed this game um thank you very much to everybody for for watching and obviously 
helping us. We scored not bad. Um, and as I mentioned at the start, you can win a copy of this game. All you need to do is there is a Google form uh, which is linked to in the show notes of this video. I will put it in the chat now. Just bear with us a minute. And my internet has stayed for the whole of the video, which is great. Um, so here we go. I'm going to put a comment in the in the chat right now. If I can do that and do that. There you go. Right. So click on that link. It takes you to a Google form. Fill in your name, fill in your email address. There are a few questions about what we've done here today. Uh, and one at the bottom uh, about whether you are a patron supporter of mine, because a lot of the work that I do is funded through my patron campaign. So thank you very much to all of my patron supporters for uh, helping make a lot of the content that I make possible. And yeah, we're all done, Rick. So box four, yeah. when are we going to start playing it? Tomorrow night. I haven't got it. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't have my copy contest. of it yet. Apparently Asmodee <laughs> is supposed to be sending me a copy, but uh, yeah, they, they don't always see all of the emails. So hopefully I'll be getting a copy of it soon and we can, uh, yeah, we can start playing through it because yeah, this has been, this is excellent. I can't wait to play it again. Do you want to stream it all? No. No, well, we'll no. play it then. I'm we'll happy the... streaming this one because it's a demo scenario, but Vicky will want to play those yeah. cases with me as well. Um, well, let's get yeah. the Victorias in, involved. Both of them can play it. Get both My Victoria and your involved. Victoria. Yeah. Cool. Thank <laughs> you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed the play along. Uh, yeah. Thank you for everybody. Um, and I will be back later on the week with some more live streams. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Rick. Bye. See you later. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.